I don't know, maybe like sometimes I feel like I get away with warmer bronzers because I've got dark hair, but I don't know, I just feel like this one is particularly tangle. Hi, hello, I hope you are all well. If you are new around here, then hello, it's lovely to meet you. If you are returning, then thank you very, very fucking much for coming back. My name is Alana and I'm a 36 year old lady living in Scotland and that is where my accent is from. And on this channel, we predominantly talk all things beauty, hair care, skincare, lifestyle, travel, bloggery, bullshit, the liberal sprinkling of sarcasm, cynicism and honesty thrown in on top. So if that sounds like your cup of tea, there's a little subscription button in the corner, give it a little thumbs up, all that other YouTuber bullshit. This video, however, is gonna be some new bits that I picked up from the drugstore recently, including some Makeup Academy stuff from Superdrug. This palette cost me £3.75. £3.75 and it's what is on my eyes today. So this is the look I've created today with all the kind of drugstore stuff I've hauled recently. If you like the look of it, then just keep on watching. Okay, so you know the chat, grab yourself a tea, a coffee, a cuppa, whatever the fuck you like. I have got a new mug. Don't know if you're gonna see what it says on it. It says, rather be home, as in like, I'd rather be at home. This is my new work mug. This is a new kind of little set of merch that Mikhail McDade has put out. I really like Mikhail McDade. Um, it's one of those kind of parasocial relationships where I watch her and I think, God, actually, like, you're so down to earth, you're so normal, all that kind of stuff. And I bought her merch last year because um, she brought sweatshirts out and she's brought more out this year and I love this colour. Love a sweatshirt. And this one says, just tired. I said it inside the sweatshirt there. And she brought out new mugs as well. And I thought for going back to work, I definitely want a rather be at home mug. But besides all that, I feel like this afternoon, I'm going to go to a friend's this evening. She's cooking us, like a few of us are all gonna go over. We're having dinner and some drinks and stuff. And I feel like I could just put on my normal kind of go-to makeup, but I picked up a few bits from the drugstore, a couple of new things and a couple of things that I've been using for a little while. And I picked this up from Makeup Academy, right? This is from Superdrug. I have used their stuff over the years. I remember they used to do pound eyeshadows. I probably still have a few, like just in my nostalgia collection. And these here are their eyeshadow, like it's little dupes of the Natasha Denona, isn't it? But the reason I picked this one up is it's a cool toned palette. I don't really own any cool toned palettes. So when Jamie Genevieve and Vive brought out the 90s palette, which I remember was a really cool toned palette, people went absolutely bananas for it. I did not pick it up and I have no interest in picking it up because I am not someone who wears cool toned eyeshadows pretty much ever. But I also seen that she brought out the little quads. And again, the one that really turned my head was obviously, was it Burn? The one that had all the orange tones in it. Oh, so predictable. But I also thought the black one, the kind of dark tones, I think it's called Noir, was really, really interesting looking. And I thought, do you know what? I'm gonna buy this one. Obviously it might not be the same quality of Natasha Denona or Vive, but if I wear these shades and I think, oh, that's quite nice, then maybe I'll dip my toe into a more expensive cool tone palette at one time or another. But I wanna try these because I figured if I don't like them, then I'm not gonna spend any money on an expensive cool tone palette because it's just not what I'm gonna wear. This gives me kind of millennial, uh, maybe late 90s vibes of that kind of gray and black smoky eye. And I was a huge goth back in my teens. So this kind of, let's just try it. Let's just give it a go. I also picked up from Makeup Academy this which really intrigued me. It's an eyeshadow stick. Some of my favorite eyeshadow sticks are from Kiko Milano. I've actually got one here. And um, they're just like the Laura Mercier ones. They're really good dupe for the Laura Mercier ones. Can you see what that is there? That's a kind of um, old gold color that I have from Kiko. But these ones from Makeup Academy are double-ended ones. And on one side, there is a matte shade. And on one side, there is a shimmer shade. I'll just swatch these quickly for you. I did pick up the kind of warm-toned orangey color in this because I thought, what is the shade that I will get the most wear out of? That is them there. Now, obviously, this, as I say, is a proper, like, burnished orange tone. And then a kind of coppery, shimmery sheen over the top. So very, very up my street. I will give this a go. I'll maybe make a wee real, like an affordable Friday using this product. Cause I thought it was very, very affordable. I also picked up from MUA the Satin Sheen Lip Stilo, which was this and it's in, oh, what shade is this? Oh, uh, does it say it? Romance. Now I did pick this up thinking it would be a kind of juicy orange color for the summer, but I tried it on the other day and I feel like it is much more of a pink tone. Uh, I probably should have known that from the name Romance. But it's like one of those nice kind of sheeny, bammy, 
lip products, but I think you can see it's quite pink. It is quite pink. It's verging on Barbie pink. I don't know if that is the right color for me, unfortunately, but we'll give it a go. I'm just gonna wipe it off because it's not gonna go with the look that I'm doing today. But I've not given it a lot of wear time or anything like that, but I picked that up as well. I also picked this up from the XX Revolution. This is their Bam Blush Multi-Use Bam Lip, Cheek and Base, right? So I know Revolution have got the Jones Road dupes. They've got those kind of ones. But this one is from XX Revolution. Here it is here. And I think this straight up looks like a dupe for the Danessa Myricks Duet Bam in Sweetwater. I think it's very, very similar. Uh, on closer inspection, you probably won't see it in the camera. It definitely has like a shimmer to it as well. It's not just a straight up flat coral blush. So I may try that today. Again, with the cool toned eyes, will I try that today? I don't know. Uh, and I also picked up this. I've been trying to get my hands on this for ages. I've seen it a long time ago, but every time I went into the drugstore, um, they were always like already used. Somebody had cracked it open and used it. And I was like, well, I don't want that. So this is the collection Gorgeous Glow Highlight Stick. And I thought this looks quite similar to like the ones that I like from like Glossier or the new one I've got from Merit. Let's give it a little go. Uh, and it just is highlighter. It doesn't have a shade name or anything. I think they've got a contour and a blush version of this as well. And I also picked up this from Makeup Academy. This is their bronzed cream bronzer and this is in the shade Caramel. Now, unfortunately this one, I do feel <laughs> it's a little bit warm for me, uh, but they didn't have any testers out and the shade before this one, I can't remember what the name was, was very cool toned. The reason I would never reach for it is because it would make me look like a corpse. I have got this funny in-between skin tone that isn't olive, that isn't fair. Like I can't get away with greyish colours. I would look like a corpse. It's maybe because I've got darker hair and warmer hair that it just looks a little bit odd if I was to wear cool toned uh, base products. But if I wear something to olive, then I start to look a little jaundice. If it's a little bit on the yellow side, sometimes it helps with any redness that I've got, but I do have to be wary of that. I really need things that have an undertone, especially in a bronzer, that have a ruddy red undertone or a pink undertone. That just makes me look like I've caught the sun because I would go a little pinky red colour because I am very fair, obviously. So... I've picked this up and I'm going to give it a go. I really enjoy the Studio London one from Superdrug from them. This one we will see what I think of today because I'm definitely going to try it out. So I am going to start out with this little palette. Uh, they do have names from left to right it says, which would be this way. Is that right? Is, is that right? From left to right as I'm looking at it? As I'm looking at it, left to right is that way. Is that right? Oh my God, this is going to be so confusing. As I'm facing you, this is obviously the right. But if I was to look at that, that is the, that is the left. Blah. So I think <laughs> that was too fucking confusing. So I think it is Moonbeam, Orbit, Dust, Astro and Eclipse, which would make sense because the dark one would be Eclipse, wouldn't it? So. I'm going to go ahead with the NYX Bear With Me Concealer Serum. I have actually really been enjoying this. I think it is a very, very nice product. But what I'm going to do today is just put it on as a little bit of a base down before any eyeshadow. You can obviously use a proper eyeshadow primer or I do like using these like little crayons, those types of things. Today, I feel like I don't want to, I want to see what these shadows look like on their own before I put any bases on with them. So I'm just going to put down a little bit of concealer before we start. I do have quite um, veiny eyelids, is that what you would say? All right, so I brought you in a little bit. I am gonna start off with that first one, which is Moonbeam, and just gently put it in the crease and see what happens. So I'm not really using it as a transition color, but I am gonna pop it into the crease to give me a little bit of a dimension. Now it's definitely a cooler palette. It's definitely a cooler shade of brown than I would normally wear, but there is a very slight undertone of warmth to that, which is quite nice. It's not totally and utterly grey. It's definitely a more grey toned brown, but I still think that's that's quite a nice shade. I think that's okay. I feel like it's went on really smoothly as well. It blended out quite nicely. It's certainly not like caused me any issues in the blending situation. Uh, now I am going to go in with, because as I said, we're going we're gonna to make it old school. Let's do a little gothy look. Um, not goth, but like, you know, rock chick. Let's do that. Do you remember uh, Kate Moss circa probably 2009, 2010, when she done that launch with Topshop and you got Baxter jeans? Do you remember them? The first ever grey skinny jeans. 
fucking bane of my life because they were the massive on-trend thing at the time and I have got legs like a footballer and never ever suited me. I am so glad that kind of baggy style jeans came back in because that is absolutely my cup of tea. I think just before I put on any other darker colours, I am also going to take that Moonbeam shade in here as well. I'm not saying I'm doing a halo eye, but just to give me a little definition on this area here, very lightly. I didn't even really dip back into the palette there, I just kind of used the excess which was on the brush. And now I am going to go in with Dust, which is the one in the middle, which is a definite like cool toned shade. And I'm going to just place that with more of a kind of stamping down, what are these called again? Paddle brushes? Fuck, totally went out of my head there. This by the way is from Lara Fay, it is an E15. The two brushes I've used so far are Lara Fay brushes. I have been sent PR from them before, but actually um, anything that you see that's black was all bought myself. They've only sent me the kind of newer collections since I became a huge fan of them. So, just going to use a little paddle brush and pop that there. Now I could do the, the whole halo eye thing. I absolutely could. But what I'm thinking is, that wasn't a huge 90s thing. He didn't really do that. It was all about the smoky eye on the outside and then like the silvery bit in the middle, wasn't it? So, what I'm going to do is just buff that out with a brush that I had the moonbeam on and blend it a little bit. Now, many, many moons ago, I used to go to a club called the Cat House. It was a rock club. Still would go. Still would absolutely go. If I didn't have a child to look after every weekend, I would probably go. If the odd night out arose, then I would be there. I actually said to my best friend about this evening when she was making us all dinner, I was like, there's no chance we're going to end up going to the club, is there? There's no chance we're going to go to the nightclub because... If there is, then, you know, you need to let me know in advance. And she was like, no, absolutely not. I'm far too tired. My Sundays are too precious. I am not going out on the Raz. And I was like, right, that's fine. I'll still get dressed up though. <laughs> I'll still, you know that way, there's just, there's just a risk. But to be honest with you, see, since having Jack, like we've had the odd evening out. Uh, we had a couple of weddings to go to since he's been born and things like that. But in all truth, being hungover, trying to look after a child, it's not fucking worth it. it. Really just is not fucking worth it. And I have not been hungover having to look after my son at any point, but I've been on the verge of it. One too many glasses of wine, I think it was at my birthday, I was like, ooh, one too many cocktails and I felt it, had myself a chocolate milkshake and I was fine for the rest of the day. But if I'd went any further, I would have been regretting that. Okay, so we smoked that out a little bit. Again, I think those shadows are really good. Like, I don't feel like they look patchy or anything like that. They have blended beautifully. I'm pleased with that, I really like that. What I am gonna do is I have got from Avon, they actually sent me it, a glimmer stick eyeliner in blackest black. It's one of these little um, retractable doodads. I am gonna take that really close to the lash line if we're gonna be doing a real smoky eye. Now this is a very soft eyeliner. I tried it out a couple of weeks ago just to give myself a kind of little bit of a winged eye and smoke it out. I was like, whoa, this is really black and really, really soft. I am just looking for a little smudgy brush. This is just a BH Cosmetics that I don't know when I got it, how long ago I got it. And I'm gonna go into Eclipse, which is the blackest one, and just run that along on top to give a really smudgy, smoky eye. Like I say, I feel like I'm stepping back in time here because this is the look that I would have been doing easy at 19 years old as a goth, going to a goth night. Because I wasn't like super duper like, oh, I'm going to be goth with a big winged eyeliner all the time. Like, yeah, I used liquid liner, but I always preferred like a real smoky eye, a real grungy eye to a big like Amy Winehouse style winged eyeliner. I think I spoke about this before as well. You could easily like put some tape here or something if you wanted to keep things really, really crisp when you take it away. But I am just kind of freestyling today because I really can't be bothered. I'm not going anywhere fancy. I just wanted to give these shadows a go. What I am going to do is go back in with a slightly smaller brush. This one here will do. It's a Spectrum KJ Jane Hughes brush. I think it's number 17. Uh, I do have a code with Spectrum. If you wish to use it, it will be on the screen somewhere. And I'm just going to kind of pull up from the line I've made with that colour um, that is in the middle. What is that called? Dust? Yeah. So I'm just going to do that and kind of blend it into that shade in the crease. I'm going to go back in with this little blending brush and I am going to go into Moonbeam first and pull that down here and join it up to this 
kind of wing situation. But I probably will bring it a little heavier under here too. And then I am going to go into dust, which is the darker one, and just pop that on the outer. Now I am going to take one of these fun shades. This one is Orbit. I think I'm going to take that in here somewhere. I'm going to use my finger to start. Just pop that right here. Oh, that is a beautiful, beautiful shimmer. So, so nice. What I think I'm going to do is take the other one, which is Astro, and pop that more on the bottom area because I do want it to be a little darker, but with it having a little shimmer to it, might just change up the dimension. And then I'm going to go back into Orbit and pop it right here. I think I've mentioned this before. If I put a kind of highlight shade right on the inner corner, well, a shimmer shade, not a highlight shade, on the inner corner. I feel it doesn't do much for my eyes than if I pop something almost below the iris. If I kind of do the tear duct and the iris area, just makes them pop a little bit more. Now, personally, I do think I'm going to need something in the inner corner, but not out of that palette. That is not going to work. I'm not sure what yet, but I might reach for something else that I own. But First impressions, I think that's pretty nice. I'm gonna go on and do the other eye and I will come back to you. Okay, so that is me done the other eye and I have to say, I'm kind of fucking into it. I like it, it's a smoky eye, what can I say? This isn't as cool toned and scary as I thought it would be. I also think that these are really nice little shadows considering this palette costs you £3.75. Like I say, has it got the quality of that of Thieve or Natasha Denona? I would say, I love the shimmers. I think the shimmers are actually really, really nice. And I think that the shimmer Orbit is slightly more interesting than the one that is called Astro. What I will say is the once it is on your eye, there isn't quite so much dimension to it. Like there doesn't, it doesn't shift in the light quite the same, but it's still definitely like there. It's a shimmer and you can see it. It's a very soft texture, um, a little bit on the crumbly side, you might say. One of those ones that you maybe need to push back into the pan. But I have found that with my Natasha Denona five pan palette sometimes. So that isn't something that I'm like, oh, because it's a lower priced palette, that means it's crap quality. What I will say about the mattes is they probably don't blend quite as smooth as slightly higher ends, but they definitely work. You can get them there and it doesn't take loads and loads of work to get them there. They're just not as easy as higher ends, but I will say that I think they work really, really well. So let's bring you out a little bit. I am going to go in with the number seven Hydro Luminous. This was a foundation that I spoke about for years. I have, this is a new purchase as in a repurchase. I spoke, look, it's still got the silver foil on it. I spoke about this foundation for years. I'm pretty sure it was in my yearly roundup for a good few years in a row. And it is a lovely foundation. It says it's a medium coverage. I would probably argue that it's light to medium. It says it's also got an SPF of 15. Obviously, I would like that to be a little bit higher, but I always put my SPF on a 50 anyway. But this is so moisturizing. It is absolutely beautiful. I wear the shade Warm Ivory. Most of the number seven products, I am in Warm Ivory. I am gonna take a big kind of buffing brush again. This is a Lara Faye one. And I am just gonna start working this onto my skin. I think it is an absolutely glorious foundation, but this has been maybe two half years, maybe two and a half years since I've used the product. Reason being, when I was speaking about this product and really raving about it and saying it was fantastic, back in, probably back in 2020, I love the product, I think it's a lovely product, but I think their shade range only had six shades in it. And I wasn't aware of that until I can actually was telling everybody it was fantastic. And then I, when I looked at the shade range to let people know how good it was, I was like, fuck me. Like that is absolutely shocking. Six, six shades? Six shades and probably five of them were like for paler people. And one of them was somebody who was slightly tan. They have expanded on that shade. I want to say now they've got probably, 20 shades now and they are a little bit more variable it could still be better but i feel like i can actually tell you about it on the channel again because they are trying to expand their shade range a little bit of course it is not perfect and i am not the person that that really matters to i've got a million foundations that i can get in my skin tone and maybe lots of people who have a deeper skin tone than me would disagree and say that their shade range is still pretty shit in comparison to other brands. But personally, I just felt like, okay, 
This is a really nice product. I've always really enjoyed this product. And now that they are expanding their shade range, I thought I would bring it back onto the channel. I do not feel like this makes me feel cakey, heavy. It feels like I've just got a nice kind of tinted moisturiser on, but feels slightly heavier than a tinted moisturiser. <laughs> totally contradict myself. I just feel like the coverage isn't too much, like I can still see my skin through this, but what I mean is it doesn't feel heavy for the coverage it's got. It feels more like a tinted moisturiser. I really, really adore this product. I always have. I think it is lovely. Now before I go on with any mascara or stuff like that, have I even got a mascara? Yes, I do. Sorry. Let's get into this bronzer. So this is the Makeup Academy bronzer. It's a cream bronzer. You can see there I have already used it. I have tried this one. This is not a first impression. I gave this one a little whirl yesterday and was like, that's quite orange. Um, as I said, this is the shade Caramel. I'm going to be quite gentle with this because it's very orange. Very, very orange straight off the bat. Now, as I've said before, slightly warmer tones, slightly maybe more yellow tones aren't the best for me, but if they've got a red or a ruddy undertone, it usually will work for me a little bit, but this is straight up orange. <laughs> it is really, really orange. And as I say, this is the caramel shade. Could I have went with the lighter shade? Absolutely, because I am a fair person. Again, I can't remember the price of this. Everything will be linked down below. Um, but it wasn't expensive. And actually the texture of it and the application of it is good. It's just the color. The color is just a little bit too orange for me. I think in the summer months, could I pull this off a little bit better? Yes, but it is pretty orange. So what I'm gonna do, because obviously I've got cool toned eyes on, is go back in with my foundation brush and just kind of meld these two together because it is definitely a much warmer bronzer than I, I don't know. I don't know, maybe like sometimes I feel like I get away with warmer bronzers because I've got dark hair, but I don't know, I just feel like this one is particularly tangle. Now obviously bronzers aren't for contouring, those are a different thing, uh, but I feel like as if, for me, using contour does just make me look like a little bit of a corpse. I'm not very good at it and I don't like cooler tones on my skin. I am better off with warmer tones. So, I always bring my bronzer like up here, a little down the rows and kind of here, where the sun would hit you, naturally. Uh, I don't generally always do it round about here. I am especially not going to do it with this one because it's very orange. But sometimes I will take a slightly deeper powder or a bronzing powder and bring it down my neck as well, just to, you know, get rid of this like jawline that I've got going on. But I feel like if I'd done it with this one, it would look, it would look quite obvious. So I'm not gonna do it. What I am gonna do is take a little bit of Physicians Formula Butter Bronzer because I love it. I feel this is a nice light bronzer, but still has warmth to it. And I am going to use that round about this area instead. I mean, it's never gonna get rid of my double chin. Let's face it, never gonna get rid of those jibbles, but <laughs> it just helps blend things together a little bit more. Okay, so I just done my brows there. I just popped some NYX The Brow Glue, this is the tinted one, through my brows because I didn't buy any kind of new brow product. Have I shown this on this channel yet? I don't think so. This is the Avon Legendary Lengths Mascara. This was sent to me and I did not expect anything from this mascara. And then I tried it and I was like, Jesus, this is a really good mascara. Like you always think Avon, meh, you don't really give it too much thought. And I did do that. I thought, mm, okay, fine. But as soon as I tried it, I was like, this is a fucking glorious mascara. So I am going to pop this on at the moment. Now, because I already have quite a dark eyeshadow look on, you probably won't see too much about this mascara when I actually zoom you in. But I'm gonna put some mascara on this eye and then I will zoom you in and let you see one with and one without. Okay, so this is the side without mascara and this is the side with. It is just a beautiful mascara. It is so, so nice. I really, really enjoy it. I think it is gorgeous. So yeah, I am raving about this mascara from Avon, one that I never thought I would ever even give a second glance to, but it is absolutely beautiful. It gives you a little bit of volume, a little bit of thickness without it getting crazy, because you know I'm not into that kind of a mascara, but it also gives you really nice length as well. It just gives you a nice fluffy, fluttery lash, but it actually has a plastic wand, because sometimes I find you need to have a traditional brush to get that effect. This does that, and it has a plastic wand as well. I feel like this look needs to make it even more 2000s, 90s. A nude eyeliner. Do you remember doing this? Putting nude or white eyeliner in here. 
but also we definitely done black as well. Let me see what I feel like. <sighs> oh, <laughs> I just, yeah. Do you remember doing that? And it was like, whoa, do I want the white or do I want black? Mm, I think, let me try the black and the other side. I loved doing as well, like tight lining, like black on the underside of your eyelashes. That also was a big kind of super gothy thing to do. I always find when I was younger, this really closed off my eye. I did not fucking think that at 15. I thought it was the coolest badass ever. But now when I look back at photos, I think, God, that really closed off my eye. It does. Can you see the difference in the size of my eyes between like the white one and the black one? The black one just looks smaller, but it also looks kind of smokier, so I'm going to go in with the black on this side. Oh yeah, that's made it really kind of smoky, sexy. I like it. Also, another little tip. Take your brush that you've used to put your powders on and stuff and just buff it into the lash line once you've done that. And it'll just pull down a little bit of that eyeliner, but it just kind of helps it look even smokier, I feel. Okay, so I could just leave it here and put on a lip. But I'm desperate to try this. It is not the right colour for this look at all. But I am desperate to try it. So I'm gonna just do this first. Very, very emollient. Very, can you see now how shiny it is that I've rubbed it? Okay, I'm listening. How pigmented though is this gonna, okay, quite pigmented. It is actually there, quite pig. Can you see that? Mm. What should I use? A stippling brush? Right, let's take a little stippling brush to it. Let's just try that. Let's stick a little, it, it is pigmented. And it's absolutely the wrong color for this look, but bugger it, let's just give it a bash. Oh, that is pink. That is so pink. Uh, I feel like, is it coral pink though, or is it just pink? Maybe a little coral pink, but that is too much. So I'm gonna go back in with my foundation and just dull that down a bit. It's not too much for me, but it's too much for this look. This look does not warrant a pink blush. I just wanted to try that product. What I'm gonna say off the bat is, I think that I will really enjoy that product over the summer. I will try it again with a different look because it certainly isn't gonna go with this look. There is a nice sheen, can you see that? Mm. Yeah, into that, that's nice, but yeah, not with not with this look. That is not the look I'm going for. What I am going to do is take a little bit of my concealer, pop a tiny bit on the back of my hand and go in to the areas where I want to apply a little bit more coverage, even though I feel that that foundation does a really good job. I'm just going to put a little drop around about here, a little bit here because I had some breakouts and the perioral dermatitis is um, kind of left behind some marks there. And I am going to just go right in to the corner here as well. Okay, so far as I'm concerned, this look is slowly but surely becoming perfection. I love it. This kind of smoky, gothy, grungy eye. Yes, into it. It's not really grungy, is it? It looks more like soft glam. But I feel like it is quite a 90s eye. Right, I am going to put on a little bit of Rimmel lasting finish, is it? Lip liner and spice. Now I could use a darker lip liner, but the honest to God truth is, see for like um, drugstore lip liners, I don't own loads of them and certainly don't own really, really dark brown ones. I own like kind of nice uh, plummy ones and stuff like that and coral ones, but I don't own any brown ones. So this is really the closest to a kind of 90s brown I can get from my collection. And we are gonna do, do I wanna use the e.l.f. or the Avon? The Avon one is much more nude. I think it'll look a lo lot more 90s, but the e.l.f. one I think will suit my colouring a bit better. Let's try the Avon one first and then I can make the decision. Oh yeah, this is definitely like giving me Pammy vibes, like that kind of nude, nude lip. Remember I was saying like I don't really like a nude, nude lip? I don't. But this one just has enough pink in it that it's okay. It doesn't make me look like a corpse. And I do. I do think this actually looks really nice with that eye. So lastly, I am just going to pop on this here from Collection. It's the Creamy Highlight Stick. I'm going to just do this. So I have to say, I've used this as well already. And I've seen it and I thought, oh, is this going to be like my favourites from Glossier and Merit and stuff. And the feeling of it is totally different. It doesn't feel anything like either 
of this those products it's not like that blush balm either it is much more of a classic kind of just cream highlight type situation that is it there but it's not got that dewy sweaty effect it is just a cream kind of frosty highlighter not that that makes it bad but i find that it's certainly not a dupe for these higher end ones that i do enjoy and um, this is a pretty this is a pretty damn good dupe for the Denisa Magix but I feel like this is not in the same kind of situation as the ones that I usually enjoy. Like the Vive Skin Dew and all that kind of stuff. It's not got the same effect. Okay, so that is me. Finito. And I have to say, I like the look. I like the finished look. I think it is quite 90s. It is quite like, oh, a frosty, kind of almost silvery smoky eye. The matte lip, uh, I did I mention this is from Avon, this is Avon True or something like that, I can't remember. It's called Nude Suede, I think it was True Matte or something, again it will all be linked down below. But I think that that is a really good nude lipstick if you're looking for one that has a little bit of a pink to it, a little bit of a tone to it, I think it's very very nice. Um, I have to say this is still one of my favourite foundations, I'm enjoying how it looks on my skin, I'm pretty sure I've loved it with the wear time and all that kind of stuff before, that's why I've obviously repurchased, but this has been about two and a half years since I've used it, so I'll update you and let you know. I have to say, this little eyeshadow palette is absolutely beautiful. For £3.75, for £3.75, nobody would have a clue you weren't wearing really high-end stuff. It doesn't look like it's all like creasy, crepey, anything like that. Looks very nice at the moment. Will it crease? I don't know. But very, very nice. I also absolutely adore this mascara at the moment. I think it is so, so good. And I think as well the um, balm, the blush balm from the XX, I will love in the summer but unfortunately with this look it just isn't quite the colour I wanted. This however as I said already the Makeup Academy bronzed just a little orange just not the right colour just not the right colour for me. A lot of you actually told me over on Instagram about the Makeup Academy stuff I used them years ago I just haven't looked for them for a very long time and I have to say those little palettes very very nice. Lots of people told me about their brow pencils that were really good but I'm kind of like ugh, I'm kind of at a point where I'm like I just like a brow gel. I know I just like a brow gel because I don't need to be drawing anything on my brows to make them be there. They're already bushy enough. So a lot of people really rated their eyebrow pencils. I think about like 10 people told me on Instagram that they were the absolute favourites. So if you are looking for an eyebrow pencil, that might be the one to go and have a look at. But I wasn't going to pick it up because I knew, I just knew. I was like, I don't really use an eyebrow pencil. There's no point. But overall... I like this look. I think it's pretty cool. It's pretty full glam to be going around to my friends, but they know what I'm like. And I'm going to leave it there and I will see you all again in the next one. Bye.